Hey everyone, I'm going to teach you how to do ray triangle intersection. So at a high level, the ray triangle intersection algorithm consists of two steps. One, find a point in the plane that the triangle lives, that the ray travels through. And then two, see if that point you found is actually within the triangle. So before we get into the details, we need to review a couple things and see how to potentially implement those in C++. So the first thing is points, and we can create points in 3D. They're essentially just locations. You learned how to probably do this in high school or middle school with X and Y coordinate system, Cartesian coordinate systems. Um, in that case, they were 2D, and you could just go an X or Y. But with 3D, you can actually add another dimension, which is depth to and from. We call that the Z axis. I'll be using the GLM map library to demo this in C++. So in GLM, we create points with the VEC3 struct. That stands for Vector3. It has an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate. But there's also a faster syntax where you can just specify the X, Y, Z at instruction. Vectors are actually a little bit different than points, and we need to represent those also. So vectors, you can think of them as basically directions. They're specified exactly like points. They have x, y, and z values, so that they are in 3D. But you really think of them differently, and think of them as directions or pointers or things pointing in directions. And so here's a couple ways you can create vectors. I'm creating one for the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. You can actually create vectors from points. So you can create a vector from one point to another point. So if you want to create a vector between two points, what you do is you take the point you want to arrive at minus from it the point you start at. So vectors have lengths. They are directions, but they also have length. So you can have arbitrarily long vectors. In GLM, you can get the length by doing GLM colon colon length. This is essentially just doing a Pythagorean theorem. Um, Pythagorean theorem can extend to many dimensions. Uh, and so in this case, we're doing a third dimension Pythagorean theorem. Uh, there is a special case of vectors called unit vectors, and you get those by normalizing vectors. And the way you normalize a vector is divide its x, y, and z by its length. And so you can do that in code by just having a vector, a vec3 divided by a float. You can also just call the GLM function normalize to get a normalized vector. Normalized vectors have length one. So I don't want to do a full review of the dot product, but just a very quick one. The dot product tells you how related two vectors are. If you take the dot product between two vectors and they are related, the dot product will return a positive value. If they are opposing or opposite, it will return a negative value. And if the two vectors are perpendicular, the dot product will return a value near zero. Another important tool is the cross product. The cross product, unlike the dot product, actually returns a new vector to you. And the new vector it returns to you is a perpendicular vector to the two that you give it. The order in which you give the vectors is important. Here, the blue vector is the result of the cross product. Its length is variable, so you may want to normalize it depending on what you're doing. So the cross product will return to you a vector that is perpendicular to both of the vectors you provided when you make the function call. Different from points and vectors is the concept of a ray. Array is what you might think of when you're thinking of a vector. All vectors are really from the origin, so that is vectors start from point zero, zero, zero. Rays actually have a 3D point in space and point in a direction. We create a ray by giving it a start point and we give it a direction to travel in. And also, generally, you give it a T value and this t value is just a float that tells you how far along the direction you want to travel from your start point to define your ray. You can actually calculate points from the t value of a ray. The way you do that is you create your start point. And what you're going to do is to follow some direction from that start point for some distance. So in the case of a ray, you start the ray's start, and then you travel in the ray's direction 
by an amount of the raised t value. And if your raised direction is a unit vector that is, has been normalized, the t value actually tells you the length that you travel along that ray, one of the handy properties of unit vectors. Another important concept is the representation of a plane. There are multiple ways to represent a plane mathematically. One intuitive way is to imagine the plane as having some grounding point, some point that defines where the plane is in space. And from that point, you could imagine there's planes going in all directions. You define a normal vector for the plane that tells you which way the plane is facing. And so if you have a point on the plane and a normal, you can define the plane that way. You can see here in code, we create a struct and some arbitrary point on the plane and give it a facing direction of the y-axis. This representation of the plane is actually useful to us mathematically for this ray triangle intersection algorithm. What this form of a plane can give you is an implicit, it's called an implicit equation, where you can give it a test point and determine if that point is on the plane or not. So if we create a test point, what we can do is create a vector from the point, a point on the plane to that test point. Once we've created that vector, what we can do is take the dot product with that newly created vector and the normal vector. If the point is on the plane, the vector to that point will be perpendicular with the normal of the plane. And if you recall, the dot product between a vector and another vector that's perpendicular is zero. So if we do this dot product test and we get a zero, we know that that point is on the plane. When you know dealing with floats in code, you generally don't want to compare with just zero because of floating point imprecision. One quick way to get around that is to take the absolute value of your dot product and compare that to some small number. If it's under that small number and it's close to zero, then just consider it zero and say you're on the plane. So before we code up the algorithm, let's take a look at this geometrically. You can think of a triangle as being three points. And let's name them in counterclockwise order. First A, B, and then C. We can create two vectors between the points of the triangles. And both of these vectors are within the plane of the triangle. Now, if we take the cross product between these two vectors, and the counterclockwise order. So we'll get a new vector in blue that is aligned with the normal of the triangle. So we'll need this normal vector for a few different things. The first is to define the plane that the triangle lives within. Remember that one way to represent a plane is to have a normal and a point within that plane. So to define the plane that the triangle lives within, we can use any of the points on the triangle as the point in the plane and this new normal that we just generated as the normal of the plane. So now consider a ray that we're testing. In most cases, the ray will pass through the plane at some t value. It's technically possible for it not to pass through the plane, though, if it's going along the surface of the plane. Anyways, most of the time the ray will hit the plane, but we don't yet know the t value distance at which the plane is hit by the ray. With a bit of algebra, we can actually solve for this t value, but I'm going to get to that when we start coding up the algorithm. So say we figured out the t value that the ray hits the triangle's plane. We can calculate a point on that plane just using the ray equation. And that is the ray start plus the ray direction times t. So the last thing we need to do is figure out if this point is within the triangle. And there's a couple ways you could do this. The way I like to do it is with information we've already calculated. And that's the normals. So consider this. Let's create a vector from a triangle point to that plane point. And show that in yellow. Let's also create a vector from that triangle point to the next point in the triangle in its counterclockwise order. Now if we take the cross product of these two vectors, starting with the yellow and then the vector within the triangle, we will generate a new vector. And that new vector will either point in the normal of the triangle or it'll point opposite of that normal. If we take the dot product of this generated vector from the cross product and the normal of the triangle, it'll tell us how aligned that vector is with the normal. If the two vectors are aligned, the dot product will be positive. If they're not aligned and opposing, the dot product will be negative. Now, if you played around with this for a little while, you would notice something. And what you would notice is, 
when the point is within the triangle, the vector we are generating with the cross product is always aligned with the normal for all three points in the triangle. And whenever the point is outside of the triangle, there is at least one corner of the triangle that generates a vector that is misaligned with the normal. And that, my friends, is an implementation of the ray triangle intersection algorithm. So now let's cut that up. So let's only do one triangle. For simplicity, you can extend it to multiple. But a single triangle is defined by three points, and we'll call them A, B, C. And here I'll just throw in some test points, and we'll make a red triangle. I'll hook up the graphics behind the scenes because it's not really relevant to the tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is create a ray, and in this case, we'll just shoot it from the center of the camera out. So in our case, we have a camera ray, and we'll make the start point the camera position, and we'll make the ray's direction the direction the camera is facing. And a t value we don't know yet, so we'll make negative one. So now we need to calculate the normal of a triangle. The way we can do that is by creating two edges along the triangle as inputs to the cross product, which will spit out a vector that points in the direction of the normal. And so the first edge is try edge one is equal to try point B minus try point A. The second edge is equal to try point C minus try point A. So we've created two edges pointing away from A. And the triangle's no flat normal, we'll set that equal to try flat normal is equal to the cross product of edge one and edge two. So let's create a, a plane that the triangle lives within. So the normal of the plane would just be the triangle's normal. And a point of the plane could have been any of the points, we'll just choose point A. So here we need to do the algebra to solve what t is. So here's how we figure out the t value at which the ray hits the plane. We need two equations. The first is the plane equation. And here we have a scalar, which is zero when a test point is on the plane. And we set that equal to the normal of the plane dotted with that test point minus some point on the plane. So in this equation, n is the plane's normal, p is some point on the plane, and a is the point that we're testing to see if it's actually on the plane. This is the implicit plane equation. There's also the ray equation. Here we have some point generated from the ray. This is equal to the start of the ray plus the direction of the ray times some distance t. So s is the start point of the ray, d is the ray's direction, and t is the unknown distance to travel from the start in the ray's direction. So in our case here, we don't know t because we want to find out when the ray hits the plane. So what we're going to do is solve for t. We know that when the ray hits the plane, that point will zero if we plug it into the plane equation. But we don't know that point. So what we can do is set up the plane equation for zero and substitute in the ray equation. So that is zero is equal to the normal plane dotted with so where we put the test point in the plane equation, we can put the ray equation. So we're substituting in the ray equation to where the test point is, minus p, which is that point on the plane. So now that we've set up our equation, we can actually distribute the dot product. So we'll distribute the normal dots into the s, the d times t, and the minus p. So that gives us 0 is equal to n dot s plus n dot d times t, minus n dot p. So what we want to do is isolate t and solve for t. What we can do is subtract off this term with t, and that'll go to both sides and put t on the left-hand side. So let's subtract off n dot d times t from both sides. This gives us negative n dot d times t is equal to n dot s minus n dot p. Now what we want to do is isolate t and remove those coefficients, those coefficients being negative n dot d, so we can divide both sides by n dot d. Doing that, we get t is equal to n dot s minus n dot p divided by negative n dot d. So now we've solved for t. We could stop here, but we can make it a little nicer. First, let's factor out this n dot from the numerator. So one thing we can do is move that negative out of the denominator and up into the numerator. So we can just multiply by negative 1 divided by negative 1. In that case, it's just 1, so we're not really changing the value. So t stays the same but that negative gets distributed to the denominator and the numerator and changes it up a little bit. So now we have t is equal to n dot negative s plus p all over n dot d. So I prefer seeing some number minus another number rather than a negative number plus a number. So let's just swap around the negative s and p. So we get t is equal to n dot p minus s all over n dot d. Now this is what we can plug into code. 
So we've done the algebra, we know the equation for t, let's start doing that. One thing to note is that the denominator could be zero if the ray is pointing along the surface of the plane. So we need to do a zero check and say that the ray does not hit the plane in that case. So what we can do is we'll do the denominator first, and that is n dot d from the equation. So to get that, we say float n dot d is equal to glm colon colon dot, and the tri angles plane is dot normal, and the camera rays direction. So if that is equal to zero, then just return false, we didn't hit the triangle. And since it's a floating point, we'll do a little uh, fudge and just say if the absolute value of that float is less than some small number, then consider it zero and we'll turn false. So assuming we did not get a zero denominator, we need to calculate the top part of the equation, the numerator, which is n dot p minus s. So we'll say float n dot p s is equal to glm dot the triangle is normal and triangle plane point minus the camera rays start point. So that's the numerator part. And if we want to calculate t, we just need to do the camera's ray dot t is equal to n dot ps divided by n dot e. And so now we can calculate a point on that plane. So plane point is equal to the camera's ray start point plus the camera's rays t value times the camera rays direction. So now we have the point, but we don't know if that point is within the triangle. So we need to do our test against the normal to figure that out. The first step is to create the edges that we need to test against that are within the triangle. So we'll go in a counterclockwise order and we'll create an edge from A to B and set that equal to the point B minus the tri point A. And then we'll create the B to C edge, which is the tri point C minus tri point B. And then we'll create the C to A edge, which is the tri point A minus tri point C. So now that we have the edges, we need to create vectors to that point. So from the A, we'll say A to point is equal to the plane point minus tri point A. B to the point is equal to plane point minus tri point B. And C to the point is plane point minus tri point C. Okay, now that we have our vectors, we can use the cross product on these to generate a test vector that we can compare with the normal of the triangle. So the A test vector is equal to the cross product of A to B edge and the A point. Now this order is important. The way I think about it is if the point is within the triangle, what order of these vectors would produce a vector that matches the normal? So in this case, if you use your right hand rule, so if you align up first vector, second vector, and what comes out of it, if you use that right hand rule, you should be able to reason about which order you need to do this in. So in this case, the ordering is the A to B edge, then a to the point vector. So that should generate a perpendicular vector that matches the normal if it's within the triangle. So we do that for the B point, uh, B to C edge with B to the point, and then the C test vector, so cross the C to A edge with the C to the point. Now we just need to test, are they aligned with the normal? And the way we do that is with the dot product. So the A test vector matches normal is equal to glm clunk and dot, A test vector, and then the triangle is normal, and if that is greater than zero, that is, if it's positive, then it matches. So two vectors that are similar, if you take the dot product of them, they return a positive value. And so we do the same test for B. The C test vector also matches. So if we hit the triangle, then all of these will match the normal. So hit triangle is equal to A test vector matches normal, and B test vector matches normal, and C test vector matches normal. If all three of those are true, then we hit the triangle. So that's the way we return. So this is demoing the code we just wrote. This button, when pressed, shoots a ray out of the camera. I hope you liked this and learned something. If you noticed any mistakes or have constructive feedback, feel free to leave a comment below. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. And if you want to see other game dev stuff that I put out and connect with me on social media, you can get that information in the description. I'll post a GitHub link with the source code in case you're curious. And so with that, I hope you have a good day and farewell.